Queen Cipriana has inherited a powerful kingdom. Once humble traitors, now Sardinia sits at the crossroads of its future. King Lysandra the Great's expansion and significant wars left a chaotic Europe, and it is now Cipriani's duty to find a path forward. It's easy to build or conquer, but to sustain is something else entirely. Our family in Iberia in the east ignored the shocking and uncatholic actions of the Duke of Toledo, who has marched his army across the border to seize Granada, the family home of our ancestors. This comes on top of the Queen's decision to back a claimant on the territories of Valencia in order to further push back the heathen. The feud with the monarchy of the French also continues, with so many already dead, and the Queen beginning to lose her bloodlust for vengeance, perhaps his time is near. With two great wars in the west, the Muslims growing more powerful to the south, and the new and old enemies alike growing strong in the north, the reign of Kipriana will be a pivotal one for our house, but our tree is not easily felled. This is the 17th episode of a mega campaign, going through CK3, EU4, Vic3, Hoi4, and Stellaris. All episodes are streamed on Twitch, 10am EST, and posted here weekends. Let's get going. We are still actually locked in two major wars. We've begun a war with the Talifa, uh, sorry, the Taifa of Valencia, as we were approached by a man who had a claim on the title. The other thing that happened right after was that the Duke of Teletuya, who is a Catholic, surprisingly enough, declared a war on us for all of Granada. He is obviously a vassal of King Mudric, who is of our dynasty. They're a branch off dynasty that was installed by a distant relative. So we're locked in two pretty big wars right now with Queen Cipriana Sardinii Corsica. She is a gregarious, calm, humble woman, flamboyant trickster, novice physician, eagle reveler, schemer, uh, crowned by the Pope, a drunk, a murderer, dyscalculaic, and intelligent. She has her husband, Kim Ilosin, who has an edict memory. They've had a very shockingly good marriage. I think probably the only healthy marriage of this game so far, which uh, I think says a lot about our family. We have our army currently sieging out in, uh, in Iberia. We're gonna need to get some supply back because we are really underfunded and we don't have a lot of troops left either. So we're not in a great position here, to be honest. It looks like they are gonna go for Sardinia. That's not good. All right, let's take back to Siege of Valencia. We're going to get our supply back, and we had a mental break. Then we're going to attempt to find some way to push them out of Iberia. That's going to be rough. Well, this is tough. We really are not in a good position here. Oh, boy. We've been declared war upon by the Jedekadu of Mahedia, North Africa. 7,000 troops. Yeah, we've got their forces on our side. We're going to have to go and try and fight them on our home isle. Our allies are what will really help us win this war, but none of them are willing to cross to help us out in Sardinia. Now, if we can just wait long enough and get our forces built up to what they are supposed to be, which is quite a lot, we have the defensive advantage on Sardinia. Oh, okay, here come our allies. Let's go ahead and see if we can get a battle then. We don't have to wait then. They are going to get our capital, though. He took our crown! And we lost the war against him. We lost Granada. Well, we're going to get fucking revenge. We'll have to fight our own family to take that back. Castile took it. We really have gotten a little bit weak here. We're going to have to really work on getting stronger. All right, let's finish the war with Valencia. We'll take the rest of eastern uh, Iberia. The easings of tensions, if that is possible, between myself and King Roger seems to confirm he has abandoned his vendetta against House Torres. It's hard to believe, but I would be glad to be freed of worries regarding a Brian threat. The French no longer see us as their enemies, but... They're even more dangerous than they were now, than they were before, because of all this territory that the HRE has ceded in Europe. I mean, they could quickly grow to be very powerful here. This siege should end the war too? It does. With this, we will install uh, our own dynasty in Eastern Iberia. We lost Granada, but we gained much land. Small consolation to be sure, but still. All right, let's deal with this Taifa in North Africa, and then we will be without war. We need to deal with our debt. We need to rebuild our military. And at this point, we need to start considering our future. And their army's fucking huge. Maybe if we don't engage them in the mountains, perhaps that will... No. We'll wait till we get supplies back. We'll resupply our army. We'll, we'll get a little bit more of our troops back. And then we'll push this army out. And we'll take the fight to North Africa. They're just manning this small bit of territory. We're going to give it to them. We, ne we need to reorganize. We're in bad shape here. At this point, Queen Kipriana is seeing her nation just being destroyed by debt. Her army is in complete disarray, supply gone, and we've recently conquered territories in eastern Iberia that we need to get some semblance of control and is going to go ahead 
and give terms to the heathen. Something her ancestors are looking up from hell at and certainly cursing. Queen Kipriana, who is again not an ambitious or warlike woman, she can be brutal when needed, like she clearly was with House Borione, um, is at this time probably coming to the realization that her future is not as secure as she thought. Again, King Lysandre had a great army, but he also ruled and had a few attack him due to the fear, right? He was a very dreaded man known for his brutality and frankly evil nature. We don't have that, if anything, we're known to be a fairly good ruler, right? Besides the murder. So that probably does paint a bit of a target on our back. We're not known for being a great warrior. A uh, crusade has been called for Hellas. We're going to fight. Oh, they're Turimis. They're Turimis? We need someone who doesn't have children right now. Stefania, we can do her. She's very capable. She's comely and she has an edict memory. She's 16. We're going to make her our beneficiary and we're going to find her a matrilineal marriage so that our succession will be secure in the case that we do get a title in Hellas. Oh, it's just this little region here. Everything else is Orthodox. There's a little bit of Islam left in what was that uh, Bulgarian emirate, but we installed a Catholic there who's converting it. Apostolic is still around. And then the Middle East actually has a lot of Orthodox and a little bit of Turimic as well. Wherever I go, Count Atrid of Mulligan is sure to follow. We'll look in his eyes, the words on the lips. I know exactly what he's after. The Dorvan familiar Kinslayer murderer Amalogon is trying to seduce us. Obviously, um, we're, we're not going to allow for that. Queen Kipriana ain't the hoe type. And now at this point, we're really just waiting to get our coffers refilled, our debts repaid, and into a stronger position here. With sufficient tutelage, even a child that has displayed little natural inclination towards administration such as Lissandro can come to truly understand it. Displaying a thorough understanding of the flow of gold and the wanderings of people. He even expressed remarkable creativity in dealing with these matters. Wonderful. He became a fortune builder. He's our heir. He is a character as well. He really, I think, fits the name Lissandro. He's deceitful, wrathful, and vengeful. He's a fortune builder, a callous antagonist. King Belasco of Navarra is plotting to kill our son. Not even our heir. Our son could also get married. Let's go ahead and find him a wife too. We're gonna marry, uh, we'll betroth our heir and son to the, the daughter of the King of Galicia, who's very strong. He has a massive army and he's also obviously uh, going to be quite hostile to Castilia. Recently, a number of towns in Menorca have acquired a reputation for attracting pilgrims traveling the way of St. James to Santiago. That is, a number of the pilgrims decide to settle in Menorca after they are done with the pilgrimage. Perhaps they find the area's scenery and culture mesmerizing, or perhaps they want to escape the unfortunate pests back home, or perhaps they believe the area can offer them better economic opportunities. Either way, this means a lot of talented people have moved here. Their contributions to the local economy and society have not gone unnoticed. There was a commotion among the children today. Barcel was attempting to preach amongst his fellow youngsters and became the target of a small fight. Solomon II intervened and managed to stop the fight before anyone could be hurt. God damn, he should be our heir. Jesus Christ, Solomon II. We are going to take the siege for Hellas for ourselves. We have landed. The armies of the heathen are dispelled to many corners of Anatolia, I believe, actually. Oh, no, they hit us. Oh, we're going to lose this if we don't get aid right now. They're going to watch us die for the second time in the history of our family. The Pope and the papacy simply watched as our army was slaughtered. Yeah, our whole army just got wiped out. You know why? The Pope just took the siege of Athens for himself. All right, let's try and land in the capital again, see if we can get the siege from Athens. A strange decision comes to me again all of a sudden. I feel as if somewhere someone has said something unflattering about me. Well, we can go drinking. it will make us feel better. Yeah, we're going to get slaughtered again. Our armies are completely... This is an inward reflection moment for our house here. Again, I don't think Kipriano will be the one to really expand and make us strong, but our heir, Lysandre II. All right, well, let's, let's go take the siege of this island. We should be able to at least do that. Let's also get our marshal to work on bringing order back to Logadora, which we lost. Did the Pope never give us gold? We asked for it. He lets our armies be destroyed, and then he refuses to give us gold. Oh my god, we're gonna get slaughtered again. Oh, we took the siege. We actually might win this. Well, our son is gonna get a fucking lesson in warfare here. Here we go. We had the defending advantage, but their troops are just so much stronger. It's because for some reason... None of our special troops are getting raised when we go to war. News from the hills of Chalkis finally arrives at the hands of the exhausted messenger. I know immediately that something terrible has happened to my son. Oh man, she can't catch a break, can she? There amongst the bitch dispatches it reads, Our brave Lysandra II was killed leading an attack against the Hell Knight Pikeman. He was slayed by Mahmud, knight of Captain Fodal. 
in a fierce encounter. I could not have saved him, but no parent should outlive their child. Yeah, he's dead. Our heir's gone. Prince Barcel's going to inherit now. He's forgiving, impatient, and cynical. This is really not a good time for our house. After, like, just this ridiculous success and victories of King Lissandro, which ended in the dissolution of the HRE, there was a brief period of stability for, for the Queen and for Sardinia, but it's really gone at this point. All right, our son has come of age. He became, wow, a great eminence. Well, he'll get the siege. He'll get some experience in combat at the very least here. And we're going to need to find him a wife, too. I mean, honestly, I say we just betroth him to the same person here. To the uh, Princess of Galicia. St. George has granted Queen Stefania victory in the Crusade for Hellas after defeating Prince Thomas and his heathen warriors on several occasions. Our warriors forced the enemies of the faith to admit their ignominious defeat. Okay, so our daughter did actually inherit. And she already does have uh, heirs too. Oh my god. Yeah, really good ones too. I guess getting slaughtered in so many battles and getting no aid from the Pope finally did make him uh, feel bad and grant us something. So we did get the... We did get another Crusader Queen. We've allied our own daughter. And my god, look at that gold we got. 2,400 gold. A ridiculous amount of prestige and piety as well. One of the bad things that actually came out of our breaking up the HRE is ironically in our attempts to, to stop the power and overarching growth of the HRE, we actually empowered our rivals in France. They've taken a ton of territory since the breakup of the HRE. All right, we're gonna go ahead and disband our mangonels. And I am going to get us bombards instead. We need to modernize our military here. We'll bring order to Valencia next. We need to get a lot of that back. It's really hurted us, hurt us not having a lot of control in the areas we control. Solomon II comes of age. He's an astute intellectual, fairly capable. He did have an edict memory and he's quick. He's not intelligent, but still very capable. Oh, good. Our income jumped way back up. Now that we're not reinforcing our men-at-arms, we do have a very large income again. So we're going to work a little bit on restoring some of our holdings here. And then we are going to try and get some revenge on a few people. We'll marry him to the Countess of Bremen in uh, in Germany. He'll get titles up there. We'll have a branch of our family in northern Germany, which will be very nice. So we'll marry him to her. We can vassalize Amelia. We could actually just vassalize the person who owns northern Corsica. And in doing so, we'd actually get territory in Medina and in Fermo. She's, again, not warlike. She'd take the diplomatic action if she could. Yeah, we'll offer him vassalage. That's surprising. Wow. Archon Ugo of Amelia which means that we now directly control all of Corsica and now parts of Italy as well. I'm hearing rumors about a hermit who resides in Ibiza. Many details about this mystic's identity are contradictory. For example, they say he's a man, others a woman, and yet others that this hermit is neither or both. What most of the stories agree on, however, is that this holy person is a true believer who is full of wisdom and understanding about the truth of the universe as taught in the scriptures. However, the thing is, everyone wants to seek an audience with this hermit. As a result, it is said this hermit struggles to find peace and quiet in their spiritual practice. He always tries to hide elsewhere, but is found again by intrepid zealots. Anyways, the rumors of legends of this hermit are certainly inspired locals to dedicate themselves more to religious matters. As the troubadour keeps pronouncing lines of love and desire, I try to keep from showing the rest of my court how flattered I feel. Why is everyone trying to seduce Queen Thicriana? Like, honestly. Like, every everyone is going after our queen. Like, at this point, it's ridiculous. They say that oil... Why is she getting all these fucking seduction events? Goddamn. They say the oil is made from rose hips. The fruit of the rose plant is good for keeping one's skin looking youthful and beautiful. In this era when many women, even a powerful and mighty queen like myself, are judged based on how we look. To be fair, that's the case for women up until this day. Like, let's be honest. Such as oil may be beneficial. I'm considered procuring more to maintain my youthful looks. The inbred Pope. He's hale though. You wouldn't know he's inbred. He, he doesn't, he doesn't, he looks more like the Targaryen kind of inbred rather than like the, uh, the Habsburg kind of inbred, you know? I have several cups of spiced wine in and the meal. I would normally be quite merry. Unfortunately, the accursed presence of Antoine diagonally opposed to me at the table. Oh, he's at the Capet dynasty. They're one of the Boyone family. He's somehow at this feast. All it takes is the merest hint and sleight of mouth, and I'm leaning across the surface, pointing fingers and shouting at the top of our voices. You sick of it! You wench! Oh. He said the W word. You couldn't best a child and attest to strength. He's not very strong. We're not gonna lose prestige to a fucking member of House Poryone. If this was another family, we'd let it go. We're not gonna do it for a member of his family though. And we lost. Damn. All right, we have a strong army and we've gotten Corsica under our control. This North African dynasty really needs to be dealt with, doesn't it? We don't have a claim on Granada. That's literally like from our line. He literally attacked a fellow Christian and the Pope likes him. Wow. Yeah, we don't we don't even have a claim on on Granada. 
We're gonna we're gonna save up money to actually get some coffers for the war, and when it's done, we're gonna go to war with Tunis. This man obviously supported uh, the current emirate in taking land from us in North Africa. We're gonna take back our territory and more. We need to expand. Like, this is bad. We're we're kind of losing. We've lost a lot of territory. We can't get back much of it, and we're surrounded by great powers. So yeah, we gotta be careful here. The Holy Eastern Empire is forming apparently. Homo deficit Queen Cipriana. I'm Alonzo. I've traveled far to ask for your aid in fighting a great injustice. The man in front of me bows deeply before continuing with his well rehearsed plea. My brother and friend, Amir Raimundo, currently sits on the throne of Aragon, but I am the true and rightful ruler of those lands. If you ate- oh, the Dunids are still around? They're the, I think, if I remember correctly, they're the really powerful Muslim family in Iberia in the beginning in, in 1066. They're still around, apparently. Goddamn. If you aid me in pressing my claim, I shall swear fealty to you. As long as he's willing to convert, I'm fine with it. We'll declare the war. All right, we have a war to install uh, someone upon the throne of Aragon. All right, we'll call for the soldiers, raise the banner of House Torres, and sail towards Iberia once more. We'll land next to them in Valencia and immediately forge north to defeat their army, siege out their capital, and put a quick end to this war. My god, our troops are expensive. The battle of Sigorbi ended in an astounding victory. Not really, but I eagerly listen to the messenger as he reads the report from my commander, Archon Hugo. My lady, we come upon the enemy banner while we were cleaning the battlefield. We thought it would be a shame to leave it behind. Perhaps you wish for it as a trophy. The Aragonese war banner, another banner of our enemies to place upon our wall all right let's end the war let's install him upon the throne of aragon and continue to grow our holdings and let's go ahead and declare the war against sultan uh gaia we'll take back tunis and the lands from the father of the emir the karun emirate who took it when we were at our weakest let's declare the war for tunis and we'll call one ally as well just to get a bit of help we'll call uh we'll call galicia we'll need the whole army for this so we'll send everyone all right, let's land in Tunis and we'll go from there. They're going to bring around 30,000, uh, 25,000 soldiers to bear, so it's maybe a bit rough. Of our bombards, we will take this fortress very quickly. I'm going to take the siege and I'm going to attempt to take them in a fight. If we can get their army cut down to size, then I can potentially uh, put some of our army away too. They're going to go right for our holding. We'll go right for it right after this. All right, they are going to take them in a fight here. We're going to have to reinforce this. Let's do it. We can get them in a pitched battle here. Let's go. We'll call in Norway. We'll call in England. We'll call in Galicia. And hopefully they can deal with that. They'd want to fight heathens, so... I'm sensing a battle coming. Their army is split in half. Let's take advantage of that. Oh, they're gonna... They're gonna divide our army here. Oh, alright. The Grandmaster will hold! Let's get them aid as soon as we can. Now, he might not need it, actually. Oh, no, never mind. Oh, they, he's getting destroyed. I thought he had that. It said we were going to win. Never trust CK3. Oh my god, 30,000 soldiers! Let's wait for all of our armies to coalesce. I'm going to put them all underneath the grand... Uh, let's go for it. We're infirm! Oh. I knew that getting older would mean doing everything slower, but I didn't think it would come to a halt until my death. Lately, I feel a constant malaise, and everything takes more effort than before. I'm worried that if I lie down, I might not be able to get up again. There's no doubt that my time is running out. Fuck. Not a good time. She is 55. All right, this is an important battle. We got to win this. Come on. Come on. Yeah, we're going to get it. Come on. Oh, yeah. There it is. We got a victory there. Good. We'll siege at Tunis, and we'll siege at their ever holding too. We need to go on the offensive here. They're landing. We have to go. Oh, this is going to be rough. Yeah, we're not going to win this. Oh, god damn. And they brought in another 14 fucking thousand. Where the fuck are these troops coming from? We'll have to recoup in Algiers. Those fucking heathens still haven't been defeated. Let's send our army to deal with them so we can get out of one of these wars at least. And we'll call Hellas in. We're going to call everyone in. Calling in all our favors. Yeah, 5,000 Greeks and 10,000 Bulgarians. Not as much as I expected. Good, we'll get that. We need to go now. We're gonna we're gonna lose the ticking war score if we're not careful here. Oh my god, 40 fucking thousand. That ticking war score. We gotta get to fucking Tunis. I'm just gonna run for it. 
We don't have a choice here. They're going to siege out in the west. That's fine. We have got 50,000 soldiers here now. If we get the siege of Tunis, we'll be able to put the ticking war score at bay, which is what we need here. This is a fucking costly war, though. Goddamn. We'll have to give up that battle. Fuck it. We got to go in. Let's do it. Bring everyone. This is the battle. This is the definitive one. We got the advantage over them. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, we got it. We got it. That was fucking close. He is out way too fucking far. We can't support him if he gets in a fight here. The AIs will all go in though. Don't fucking, don't go in. Don't you fucking do it. Just let him die. <laughs> He's strayed too far from the herd. That's his choice. <laughs> 